Hey guys, it's Jeff from Home Renovision here today. YouTube channel designed to help you sort through all the muddied water of home renovations. Now, we are just out here working on our three season porch and I wanted to take a minute because I'm using two different kinds of insulation in this project. And I thought to myself, you know, this is a great time to be able to show you guys at home where to use the pink and where to use the Roxo because I don't think one is better than the other. I think each of them has their own place that they should be used. And there are a lot of factors that go into choosing what insulation. So first of all, the obvious, right? They're both the same size. They're both 15 and a quarter by four feet. Okay, now the pink is a lot fluffier, but it also compresses, whatever. The point is this, these are both designed to go in the same two by four cavity. So you might ask the question, well, what's the difference? When do we use what? I'm gonna do three different tests today to show you how to cut it and what it's like when it gets wet and how it reacts to fire. And then you'll be able to understand what is the best insulation for the situation you're dealing with because there is no one right answer. And depending on who you're listening to and who's paying them to have an opinion, you might be listening to the wrong person preach the wrong sermon. So let's get into this. So you all know I love my Olfen knife. If you haven't bought one yet, jump on Amazon. Links in the description below. Buy yourself one of these. It'll change your life. You can fully extend your knife, okay? Fiberglass pink, cuts really simple. You simply have to put a straight edge up against it. Done, okay? Now, let's try the same thing with this one. Oh, crap. If I wanna cut a small hole for electrical box or something, right, I can just go like this. Done. With this one, very similar. This insulation also, you can buy this little Ginsu knife saw. And this is awesome because if you have this laying on the ground in a stack and you're not cutting up against the floor, that also does an amazing job, okay? But that's how you cut them both. Seem pretty much the same right now, don't they? Huh. Let's see how they do with water. Now, this insulation here is a mineral wool. It's basically rock spun into insulation. It soaks down pretty good and holds its shape. Now, can we just say, if inside your house gets that wet, you got a bigger problem than what kind of insulation you're using? <laughs> well, let's see what happens to the pink. No, no, stay back, get... Oh, that's what happens to the pink, okay? This does not hold its shape. When this stuff gets wet, it'll settle inside the cavity. And here's the thing. If you're working in an area where the insulation may get wet, like a three season room, or even underneath the hose bib connection going outside the house, there's a few sections of wall cavity there, you might want to consider the idea of using the Roxel because if this gets wet, it'll drain and then it'll end up being dry again in a few days. Fiberglass pink holds that water, okay? And now it's destroyed. So if you have a basement insulation, let's say, and your, your hose bib backs up and you get a little bit of a leak, you actually have to open up the wall because now the insulation's all dropped out of the cavity. Now you got cold air blowing in, you've got condensation happening, you've got a continuous water vent, and a huge energy loss. So, that was interesting, but let's see how they both react to fire. So we're gonna use the map gas test here today. Map gas goes really hot, all right? Better than propane. Now, before I do this, pause the video real quick, put a comment in the section. I want you to guess which one of these is gonna burn the fastest, in case you weren't aware yet. Ready? We'll start with the uh, mineral wool because it's spun rock and we'll see how it works. And then we'll do the fiberglass, which for many, many years we've been using as a heat insulator in commercial and industrial productivity. So we'll see what happens, right? I'll just count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Well, that was impressive. Now let's try the other one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. <laughs> 
the reality is, folks, is it looks like both of them are pretty darn fire retardant. Now, if you're in a house and you've got insulation in your walls, and the fire gets through the drywall, and you're still in the house worried about if your insulation is going to save your life, trust me, you're already dead. <laughs> By the time a fire gets through the drywall, it's about 20 minutes has gone by. And that's no place to hang out to find out if your insulation is any good. Now, when it comes down to which one to choose, here's how I work it out. They both have a similar R value. One of them isn't going to work if it gets soaking wet. So there are very few times in your build where you're going to have water coming into the house. So it's not very often that you have to choose the rock well because it's going to get wet. I used it the bottom foot around the foundation of my farmhouse and in my three season room at the wall only because I know there's going to be water getting in. Other than that, for fire safety, like I said, by the time it gets to the insulation, it's too late. So let's consider the last element, which is the cost. Now, when you go to the store, you'll see the bag of insulation. Both companies sell it for the same price. Yeah, the difference is this. The rock sole insulation, when it's in a bag, doesn't compress, okay? The fiberglass does. See that? Two inches to one inch, all right? So the bundles are the same size. They're the same price. You're standing in the eye going, which is better? Read the fine print. The pink does 100 square feet. This one does 60 square feet a bundle. That's right. This stuff here is almost twice the money for the same job. Now, the only other issue you might use it for is for sound protection, like deadening. The reality is, is if you go check the STC chart, they almost have exactly the same rating for the sound transmission control. So at the end of the day, I'm left myself wondering, why in the world is the world so worked up over how awesome this stuff is, when the stuff we've been using for the last 50 years is just as good and half the price? Anyway, I'll let you decide what you want to do with it. If you're interested in getting more content like this, where you want to see us compare one product to another, let us know in the comments section and give us a thumbs up. All right, guys, now listen, we're going to throw you off to the bench series now. Check this out. You can see some of the other product reviews we've done.